duration, this bout is three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of no wins and two losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 66.2 kilograms. Representing Fight Academy Ireland and fighting out of Belfast, Ireland, please welcome Glenn Big Buck McFay. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, this man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of one win and one loss. He stands 175 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 65.8 kilograms. Representing KHK Team Bahrain and fighting out of the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain. Give it up for Abdul Manap, Prince Goro, Maka At featherweight, Glenn McVeigh taking the step up. Ready to go, touch of gloves. One and one versus 0 oh and two. Here we go. Opening bout of Brave Combat Federation 50. Live in Combat Kingdom. Big swing from Glenn McVeigh. Opening up aggressive. Chopping leg kicks being thrown in by Goro. You can see a little bit more emphasis now. Glenn McVeigh in previous fights. Took a little bit of time to feel his opponents out. Now he's very much taking the fight to Goro, but he needs to be wary of those two arms that come at you like four. Prince Goro stalking, but stalking very intelligently. Watch that head, it's gonna slip slide, side to side to side, so the opponent does not know where he's gonna be next. He's forcing Glenn McVeigh to skirt the outside of the cage, perhaps trying to set him up for the takedown, use the strikes to initiate the clinch and that inevitable takedown. Again, Glenn must see something in the armor, a chink in the armor perhaps if he keeps throwing that big looping overhand. Phil, right. I think, I, I believe he's trying to set up that left hand. I think the left hook is what he wants to land. He may try and pivot out, and try and catch his opponent with it, but it's a lot easier said than done. Already a much more, there's that beautiful lead hook from Glenn McVeigh, as you alluded to, Carrick, but already a much more measured approach from the young Irishman. Trying to dip, needs to be wary of dipping to that side too often or he will be met with a knee or a lead head kick. Prince Goro thus far is simply trying to strike. He's not trying to set up those takedowns yet, but when he does, it could come out of nowhere. Glenn needs to treat this fight like the Tour de France and stay on his bike. Again, he's reddened up the eye a little bit there of Goro. That lead hook so far has been money for the young man. Nice inside leg kick and already a, in the space of a week, a much more mature, measured performance from young Glenn McVeigh. Looking very calm inside the Brave Arena. Glenn's a little bit too close to that cage. If his opponent level changes and gets in on the hips, he may not be able to sprawl. The cleaner shots are being landed by Glenn McVeigh here. A lot of reddening up on the eye of Goro. Again, trying to, to come over the top. Stinging jab twice by McVeigh. Some point fairly soon, Prince Goro may decide it's time to close and try and take it down to the mat. That lead hand is money for young Glenn McVeigh. But Goro just looks like he's trying to set up that one big shot, and by that I mean the takedown. Nice sweep there from Goro. That's the takedown that we thought would be inevitable. Trying to pass the guard here of Glenn. He does have that one butterfly in. Let's just see how offensive Goro can be from this top position, Kirik. Brave Nation, Prince Goro has a couple of different strategies here. He can try and improve his position by passing that guard all the way, or he can try and stay within the guard, try and ground and pound. He may even look for a submission, which is what he may be setting up right here. Needs to be wary of Goro trying to set up that head arm triangle. If he just skirts over, you can see he's got the arm underneath. Glenn McVeigh, wise to it, intelligently trying to dig underneath and free him against the jaw of Goro. May try and use that hip bump. Oh, that little bump sweep, Goro looked to be setting up an elbow there, looked to be firming off the face of McVeigh. McVeigh down, but, uh, McVeigh down, but by no means out, trying to throw some shots from bottom. Very slick shot in this position. The top player would often hit the back of the head. Prince Goro has actually looped that hand around, hit the far ear, and of course, as we just saw, dropped that elbow straight down. Ladies and gentlemen, there is not a third commentator in the booth yet. That is just the instruction coming from Paul Hughes in the corner 
of Glenn McVeigh. Glenn doing a good job here, trying to scramble. But Goro again, the natural featherweight as opposed to Glenn McVeigh, the natural bantamweight, just imposing and distributing his body weight well here. Glenn does well to close the guard, reclaim it, and landing elbows, trying to get his back to the cage and trying to work up from here. Is he going to post and get up from here? Philosophy in mixed martial arts. Phil, of course, has changed. It used to be you would try and keep your opponent against the chain, uh, up against that fence to shut down his submission attempts. But now people are using that cage to walk back up, and that's exactly what he wants to do. He wants to walk right up that cage and get back to where he was winning, which was when they were standing on the feet. McVeigh did a, does a fantastic job here to get to that hip. Goro doing everything he can to suppress the movement, but again, Glenn McVeigh with the underhook. Has a couple of seconds here with which to work. There's the 10 second clapper. Can McVeigh get up and he's doing a great job of working to his knees from here and stands up. Beautiful work from Glenn McVeigh. What a fantastic opening round for both men. Glenn McVeigh landed a nice knee in the clinch there. Great round for both men. How you score this one depends on how much you weigh. Strikes versus grappling. Well, very much was a tale of two rounds. Glenn McVeigh getting his shots off in the opening two and a half minutes. Working the jab well, working that lead hook well. Didn't quite find the mark with the overhand, but this was the changing of the tide in the fight. The trip takedown, the sweep of the leg from Goro, and from there, he didn't land anything that, that was particularly uh, concussive or, or particularly fight ending, but it was accumulation of some good shots. You can see Goro wearing the effect of the fight a little bit more than McVeigh underneath that right eye, I believe. Ryan Martin, the best in the West, getting in there, making sure Goro can continue to the next round. Ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, when the judges are looking at the no at the effect of the strikes, it's not necessarily the number, it's how heavy they are. That's generally strikes from standing. But again, that round is in the hand of the judges. I certainly can't, can't guess it myself. All the play for, oh, and the bag of ice seems to have broken in the corner of Goro. Brave Nation, fighter health and safety is paramount. Wait with us just a moment. You cannot have ice in the ring because it melts and fighters can slip on it. Fighter health and safety is number one at all times. Just bear with us a little bit longer. I imagine we're down to under 60 seconds and the action is going to restart. Glenn McVeigh's ready to go. He's light on his feet, ready to go. Now, the more, cons the, more, the more conspiratorial among us might say that that was a little bit of gamesmanship on the part of Team Goro. See both men incredibly light on the feet for a second round, a testament to their fitness. Big Buck's corner does not want him to set down on the shots. They want him to keep moving, throw light shots from the outside, but light doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. That's it. What you're seeing right here is exactly what the coach wants. If the fighter, if Big Buck sets down hard on those shots, he can get taken down almost immediately. It's accumulation of strikes here for Glenn McVeigh. What he cannot do is let Goro lead the dance. He cannot let him occupy the center. Oh, big shot from Glenn McVeigh. That just skirted the chin of Goro. I'll tell you what, I want Paul Hughes to follow me around and just shout encouragement at me. This is, I'm getting pumped listening to him. Oh, that's another stiff jab. Goro needs to employ a little bit more side to side head movement. Hey, he's moving and he's the body. He's returning it. He's, retur he's just returned to it. He's realized he probably didn't practice it quite enough in training, spent a whole lot of time taking people down. Great point. He was moving the body, but not necessarily the head. It was staying in the center line and being a static target. But again, Glenn McVeigh with that pinpoint jab. This is the Glenn McVeigh I am used to seeing on the amateur scene back home in Ireland. This is the assured, accurate young man. Who after a couple of false starts, seems to be finding his feet very much more in the professional ranks now. Keeping that jab hand nice and low. I like that. Keep it out of the peripheral vision of your opponent so it comes up from that awkward trajectory. Very, very wise of Big, Muck, Big Buck McVeigh not to try and set down and take his opponent out with a knockout because it's it's big big reward, it's big risk. Right now, he's winning the match from the outside. 
And you can see that point of the eye of Goro is just acting like a magnet to the lead hand of Glenn McVeigh. Laser-like accuracy. Double jab from Goro. McVeigh needs to continue with that movement. There it is, needs to keep on the bike. But again, it was around this stage of the fight that Goro shot for the takedown and it was very much a half and half type around two and a half minutes on the ground or on top for McVeigh with his striking, then two and a half minutes on top on the ground for Goro. Dancing around the Brave Combat Federation Octagon may look like it's easy, but under these TV lights, it is hard, especially when you're being stalked by Prince Goro. Almost but that's exactly what Big Buck needs to do. He's got to stay on that bicycle. Now Glenn McVeigh's coming up a little too, like the arm almost looks as if it's a little bit too long for the overhand. If he were to come up with an elbow perhaps, because it seems to be the forearms more catching Goro, if he were to dip his head, land and come over with the top with an elbow, I think it might be more accurate. Fighters are sometimes faulted for dropping that lead hand, but as long as you're doing distance management with your feet, it allows you to strike from a very unusual angle and can change around, around decisively. McVeigh playing a dangerous game with that lead hand, nice and low, but it seems to be working very much to his advantage. Now there's that takedown. Let's see how the, the Pat McAllister informed wrestling of Glenn McVeigh. Glenn McVeigh also a close training partner of Matthew Elliott, so knows exactly what he's doing in these situations. 90, or 90 seconds left in the round. Goro transitioning to the back, has that arm around the waist and mobilizing the hip of Glenn McVeigh. Ladies and gentlemen of Rave Nation, what you're seeing here is called hand fighting. The ability to control your opponent's hand is huge, as you can see right now. Prince Goro has not thus far been able to take his opponent down to the ground, although he is landing some punishing knees now. And Kirk, explain to Brave Nation just why Goro is landing these knees at nauseum to the thigh of Glenn McVeigh. Because it's money in the bank. When you hit somebody in the head, if they go out, it's great. You've won the fight. Ten seconds later, their head is absolutely clear. Shots to the legs like this are cumulative. They are going to last for the rest of this fight. There you have it, the OG dropping some knowledge. Glenn McVeigh, two on one on the wrist of Goro, doing everything he can to turn in towards him. Goro changing levels, gets the takedown, but McVeigh pops right back up like a powered up Pac-Man. And Kirk, in situations like this, someone who's been involved in mixed martial arts so long, do you count a takedown like that if the person being taken down pops right back up? Absolutely not. Under the new interpretation of the unified rules of mixed martial arts, a takedown is only significant if it gets you closer to ending the fight. I did not see that happening here. That could have done it, though. Ten seconds left. Glenn McVeigh defending the takedown right now. Glenn McVeigh just looking over the commentary and saying, my round, Phil. That young man is feeling himself in there, Garrick. Very, very, very interesting fight. This as an opening fight. And ladies and gentlemen, to those people that count it, Glenn McVeigh down and out at 0 and 2. Anyone back home on the island of Ireland knows just how capable this young man is, knows the skill set. And it just took the young man a little while to find that next gear. And so far in this fight, he's found it. So you have to ask Kerrick, what are the, the KHK team Bahrain saying in the corner of Goro right now? In three words, take him down. They're going to ask for a little bit more pressure. Not going back and forth, going back and forth. Glenn McVeigh stalking the plumage of the shoulders. He wants everybody out of the cage. He wants this fight to continue. This is an entirely Different version. This is Glenn at McVeigh 2.0 right now. Touch Double glove gloves. touch, gotta love it. There's the more pressure we needed to see. A little bit of a slip there from McVeigh. Needs to be wary with those kicks. Can't let himself get too loose in there. Prince Goro has largely tried to play a counter-striking game. It isn't going his way. The ground does 100%. You can see the reddening up on the side there of Goro from one big body kick landed by Big Buck.
Claire McVeigh now occupy, occupying the center, changing level, showing the shoulder, throwing little feints. McVeigh's corner wants a little more activity. They want to. They want him to touch his opponent now. Goro needs to get back to doubling up on the jab. He was having success with that when he was firing it off to close distance. Double jab to straight. Counter hook from Goro. McVeigh gets the hand up. Again, another stiff jab, cocking back the head of Prince Goro from Glenn McVeigh. Phil, that was a perfect example of timing. If that, that shot on an opponent moving away would have done little, but it did a lot. That was a jarring one. <laughs> Paul Hughes calling for more of the same from Glenn McVeigh. And again, that low jabbing hand is paying dividends for the young man from Belfast. St. Chai kick attempt, didn't work. Sure looked good though. That'll be uh, nice for the Gramp. Glenn McVeigh showing vastly improved movement and just ring gen or cage generalship, cage awareness, Kirik. He is, I don't want to see him showboat anymore though. Mm. It doesn't impress judges, it makes the crowd go woo, but ju some judges frown on it. Glenn again, showing great awareness, had the back to the cage, pivoted off. We are just approaching the midway point of the third and final round. Goro trying to figure out the puzzle. Glenn McVeigh with the takedown on Goro. Great use of the wizard to pop right back up from Goro. And I don't think anyone expected that, Kerry Janess. I was speechless when that happened. I did not expect that in this lifetime. Very, very impressive move. Didn't keep his opponent down, but now the judges see this young man's got wrestling too. Again, as I said, that wrestling informed by Pat McAllister and training with the likes of Matthew Elliott. If he were to score a clean takedown here, it would be huge. But Goro doing a great job. Needs to be wary of the guillotine, does Glenn McVeigh. That was the guillotine that ended his last fight against Freya Al-Harasha. Corner's looking for a head kick, Phil. I think that could be dangerous. Or with just how loud it's being exclaimed by Paul Hughes, maybe that's a little bit of misdirection to, to bait the... Uh, to beat the opponent into thinking it's coming. It could be Brave Nation. Corners have systems. They'll they'll shout out things that don't mean what it sounds like they mean. Mark Henry being one of the greatest exponents of that. <laughs> one minute left in the third and final round. McVeigh cannot let himself get complacent, he needs to stick to script here. But Goro needs to show a little bit more, a little bit more emphasis just as I say that, he's shooting in for the takedown, McVeigh doing a great job in the over under position, has to widen that base just a little bit. Oh that is fantastic defense from Glenn McVeigh. Needs to dig in for his underhook, doing good to control the wrist. 30 seconds Brave Nation, 30 seconds. Potential guillotine here for Glenn McVeigh. Needs to disengage, needs to disengage and land his strikes. Needs to split that base a little bit, can't let himself get taken down here. 10 seconds to go. Switch attempt denied. Digging in for underhooks. What a fantastic fight, and what a way to open up proceedings here in the first fight of Brave Combat Federation 50. Glenn McVeigh looking like a completely different fighter, pushing the pace throughout against an incredible opponent in Abdulmanap Magomedov. Ladies and gentlemen, if that sets the tone for the rest of the night, Kirik, we are in for an incredible night of fights. Absolutely fantastic showing by both fighters, and I want to repeat 
what Phil said, Glenn Big Buck McVeigh fighting twice in an eight day span. He is brave. Just like to see a replay of some of the action there because that was full throttle from start to finish. Both men showing their heart, both men showing their toughness. Glenn, McV Glenn McVeigh looks like he's in front of me right now. This young man looks like he could go another round. It was a great fight, gentlemen. A great fight. Fantastic fight. It was a fantastic fight. Scariest moment of my career there when both men approached me side by side saying, what do you think? I pointed at both of them because I lack your bravery. <laughs> but our opinions do not matter. This fight is now in the hands of the judges. The judges are going to very shortly. Fantastic fight from both men, Carrick. And Carlos Kramer has entered the Brave Arena, meaning one thing and one thing only we are ready for the decision. All right, Brave Nation, what a way to start our historic Brave CF 50 night. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Your first two judges scored about 29-28. Your next judge scores about 30-27. For your winner, by unanimous decision, out of the blue corner, Glenn Big Buck McVay!